Good to know you're still with us in The Breakfast. We begin with a story from the north where we understand northern leaders, including state governors and traditional rulers on Monday in Kaduna, condemned NSAR's protests. The northern leaders allege that separatists hijacked the protest and that demonstrators were targeting a regime change. The Ohanese Ndibo and the pan Niger Delta Forum criticized the stance of the northern elders and have insisted on restructuring. To help us discuss this, uh, we are joined by Kayode Shoyabi, a political analyst. A pleasure to have you join us on The Breakfast. I'll, I'll just put you straight up uh, on the spot by asking your reaction to, let's start with the condemnation of the NSAS protests as an effort to, you know, go about changing government illegally. Okay, um, I think that claim is very incorrect. That allegation is wrong. I can say for free that NSAS protest is never about a government. It's about the people coming out to say that they've had enough of police brutality in our society and calling government's attention to doing the needful part time. Uh, there had been agitation before now of a police brutality on innocent civilians, you know, we had seen cases where police officers determine the, 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 the judgment of innocent civilians, you know, and people are put in, in cells. Instead of them to take them to court, they end up killing them. So there had been this agitation before now, and it has gotten to a brim that Nigerians had to voice out and call the leadership to attention and say, this must end. But when you look at it, there are underlying factors. There are underlying issues that are, are surrounding this NSAS protest. Uh, issues of bad governance and all those other things, uh, corruption, uh, uh, mismanagement of public funds that had been at the, at, the, at, the, at the back end. But because of the NSAS project, which has given Nigerians some measure of voice and uh, coming together, you know, all these issues now start springing up. Now, our leaders who knew quite well what this NSAS protest could yield, could, how it could end. They knew quite well that the moment people are allowed to have their voice, the moment people are allowed to talk, feel it, or express themselves, it becomes really, really challenging for them to continue to run the country the way they've been running them. Now, if you look at the class of the crops of leaders you see seated over there, you find out that these are people who have been leading and, and, and sitting at positions in the last 20 years. These people had watched people in the north you know, run in poverty. The, we are talking about Nigeria now. Now, when you look at the analysis, the statistics of poverty in Nigeria, you find out that it's more prone to the north than in the south. I was expecting that this leadership caucus that just came up to bring themselves up would have been seated, conjugate, congregate because of the poverty state of the north. That didn't bother them. But the major challenge they have is how to end the protest. I think I, I feel sorry for the crops of leadership we've had in time for, in time uh, uh, in recent time and I, i'm really really disappointed this shouldn't be the issue this is never about president muhammad buhari i've seen supporters of president muhammad buhari who also protested i've seen people who are who are, are, are staunch supporters of president buhari who are saying that this is not about the presidency this is not about apc or pdp this is about issues that affect an everyday nigerian People go on the road. Nobody, no, police officers not ask them whether they are APC or PDP, whether they are pro-Bwari uh, or anti-Bwari. Nobody's asking that question. People just want to leave, and they are calling government's attention to the fact that their life is being threatened. And now, some people sat somewhere in Kaduna and thought for them to subdue that protest is to tweak it towards the ethnic direction, or to tweak it towards the anti-Bwari or uh, 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 pro worry direction. No, this is not about the president. The president had said that he will never stop anybody from protesting. But people should also, while protesting, should allow themselves to have constructive, uh, constructive criticism as well as constructive conversation with the government, which is what people, the NSAS protesters are doing now. People are engaging government. There is the panel set out everywhere, most of the states now. People are engaging. So you cannot come around and say it's a plot to unseat the presidency. All it's right. a plot to unseat the government. Nobody's saying this. They knew quite well that all before now, 
they've been sitting on information that the people has. Now, the, me the media, the social media has opened the doorways. People who cannot afford to buy a newspaper can, as, can, can just open their phones and see what's happening. So they are scared. They are scared of the fact that access to information, we, we, we restrict them from owning the night, keeping Nigerians abate, holding them to ransom. People now know, people now see their, their, their warehouses where they stock power, uh, palliative items all over the place. And there's jittery now. So you can see them con uh, congregating. You can see them meeting, coming together to stand against Nigerians. But all that right. stand... Uh, hold on. Um, or kindly hold on, um, uh, Mr. Shurebi. Either, either, either via ethnicity or via religion or via the region. This is not about the region. This is not about an ethnic. This is not about a religion. They should know that. All right. Kindly hold on. I'm, I'm, I, I want to um, ask about... Um, from what you've said, you know, the northern governors seem to be wanting to give a dog a bad name so you can hang it. Um, um, do you agree with that? Um, and then second, you know, this has, it's not the first time that we're seeing things like this. So do you think that the northern governors and elders may have seen certain signs in the NSAS protests in any way that made it you know, look to them like it was sponsored or it was directed at a regime change? Are there certain things that they might have also seen that made them, you know, give that uh, declaration? Or is this, once again, just giving a dog a bad name? Well, I'll tell you, it's actually trying to sway Nigerians into sentimentality. You know, uh, they know quite well that Nigeria flow with sentiments. When they want to play selfish cards, they either throw the religious sentiment or they throw the ethnic sentiment or they throw the region sentiment. You know, at every point in time, they use all these things to, 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 to distract Nigerians from the core issues. So tagging these protests, giving it a, a bad name, is just an, is on a, is just an effort to make sure that they, they, they distract Nigerians. This is not the matter. And President Buhari actually knows. The North also knows. But they are, they are jittery about the reality. They are jittery about the fact that they know that when Nigerians have their voice, they will never ever be able to intimidate them again. And that is, this is selfish. This is to propel their own agenda because they want to stay in power. They want to stay in leadership for as long as it's possible. Both of those people that are seated, they're talking about NSAS being a bad thing or, 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 or being sponsored. Check their history. You'll find out that they've been in governance for nothing less than 10 years, minimum. So for how long are we going to keep doing this? They, they are not coming together to look at the poverty uh, nature uh, and the, the insecurity in the North. They are not coming together to, to congregate on that. They are not even addressing issues of, 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 of killings, X-Men killings, uh, uh, issues surrounding insecurity and poverty that is prominent, more prominent in the North. Nobody is talking about that, but they are talking about uh, NSAS protesters wanting to unseat the government. Nobody is talking about that. They should be real. And Nigerians have gone, they are wiser now. Nigerians are now wiser. Nigerians are now speaking up. They are not are challenging authorities and saying that this is what should be done. An average Northerner doesn't even know it's right in the constitution. And they are going to keep it that way for as long as it, it takes. So until we, we, we continue to challenge them, let them say whatever it is they want to say, it is their opinion. And I tell you, Nigerians know that that statement they are making is not real. Northerners know this is not about a Northern Southern agitation. This is not about a Northern Southern fight. This is not about a religious. Uh, fight. This is not about Oaneze, uh, the Northern leaders fight. This is about Nigerians. And as far as you are a Nigerian, you have the right to, 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 to speak your opinions into, about governance. You have the right to hold governance to account. You have the right to hold leadership to account. People who stand up to represent us must do so conscientiously, must do so with fear of God. They swore and put to serve the people of Nigeria. That doesn't seem like serving the people of Nigeria at all. It doesn't seem like it at all. It is Let's quickly talk about their uh, stance when it comes to social media. Uh, this conversation has been causing a lot of, um, um, you know, disharmony among the people, uh, governments, um, 
you know, continued insistence that uh, social media should be regulated. Uh, the, the Northern leaders have now come up in full support of the government's move. What is your take on that? Okay, first and foremost, bulk of these people that came up to say they are standing about social media bill, standing for social media bill, actually came into governance via the impact of social media. In fact, Mr. President, as I, 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 I confirmed that and appreciated people that supported him on social media when he came in in his inaugural speech. So I, I'm really surprised that someone who wrote on the platter of social media to ascend the leadership can turn around to say social media is no longer is no longer good. Social media is just a tool. It can be used by people with negative intentions, and it can also be used by people with positive intentions. What I expect the government, government to do is to look into our laws presently. And I tell you, there are provisions in our law, in our constitution, that provides, uh, that mitigates uh, a bad use of social media, especially fake news. And we have to be very careful. If you guide the people from speaking their opinion, from speaking to leadership, you end up having an anarchy. You end up having a dictatorship government. We, this is a democracy, and democracy gives people freedom of speech. But that is beyond freedom of speech, there is also taking responsibility for whatever it is you see. You say in 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 the open space. So they should take advantage of that. And whoever has pushed out any fake news or any wrong information can be jailed in a court of law as it were. So I don't know why the need to guard the people. I don't know why the need to, stop, to, 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 to sponsor a social media bill is coming from. You cannot stop Nigerians from speaking. Some of Nigerians do not, cannot even afford to buy paper. Go to, if you said you want to engage your, your honorables or you want to see your senators, there will be police officers that will stop you, that will restrict you. The only way Nigerians has to assess their, their, their leadership and their political elite is via social media. They can tweet. Someone will see it. If I want to talk to my governor now, I can engage him constructively, constructively via Twitter. He sees it and he responds. I have seen the impact of social media, even in governance. I have seen the impact of social media, even in accountability. I have quite a number of uh, organizations on Twitter, on Facebook that are doing the needful without even necessarily holding governorship roles. So we have to be very careful. We should not throw uh, the baby away with the bad water. There are people with negative intentions who push fake news and, and inciting messages on, on, on social media. Those are the people the government should focus on in making sure that they address these situations. Not saying that you want to you want to restrict social media entirely. If they do that, they are slapping Nigeria gradually into into dictatorial governance, okay. and that will be very very catastrophic for Nigeria. All right, Kayode Shoebi, I I want to go um, uh, in a different direction. Aside, uh, or maybe also still speaking with regards uh, social media, um, but I uh, we've heard from Arnez and Debo. We've heard also from the, the uh, Middle Belt Forum and other uh, social cultural groups in their response to the northern governors and uh, northern uh, leaders. Um, but we haven't heard, um, and this is at a risk of, well, hopefully we don't make this a north-south issue, but we haven't heard a loud voice from the leadership um, of uh, the southern governors, who, if you look at the figures, seem to have more of these incidents of police brutality and, and uh, special anti-robbery squad um, incidents um, in, in their regions. Um, do you think that they should come together at a time like this and share their thoughts with regards to the NSAS protests? Okay, so I, I will tell you that, sadly, we talk about party supremacy. So because of the fact that most of the governors in the south trans, uh, southwest are mostly APC governors. So bulk of them try as much as possible to be careful in their utterances in what they say. So they don't seem as if they are antagonizing the party or they are going against the party. But we need to dissociate ourselves from allegiance to party and allegiance to Nigerians or to Nigeria as it may, you know, our leadership and our allegiance of all our leaders should be to Nigeria first and Nigerians. So if you say because you are in this party because of that, 
you are not speaking out facts that you already know and you are trying as much as possible to to side your party you are trying to be quiet i've had a lot of them speak out uh, during the protest but of recent we have not had so much you know uh, of them coming out to speak against this police brutality yeah i understand that the fact that the government has started, started some activities that might be the reason for that but they, we must continue to see them and it shouldn't even be when Nigerians took it upon themselves to start protesting, calling leadership attention to it, that's when their, uh, uh, their, their, their societal leadership, like let's say Lagos State, Ogun State, or, or your state, their leadership in those, re those areas should not be coming out. These issues have been existing before now, years back, and people have been calling their attention to it. Let they never did about... anything. It's either they tell us, okay, they're going to do... Uh, Mr. Shobi, let's talk about the reactions we do have. We've gotten something from the Ohane Zendibo. We've gotten from the Middle Belt. We've gotten from the uh, Pan, the Pan Delta, uh, Ni Niger Delta group, PANDEF. Um, first, let me start with the Ohanese's position. They are saying that the NSAS protest is just the tip of the iceberg, that Nigeria should be restructured and that the northern um, leaders don't have it right yet. And then uh, the spokesperson for PANDEF made a, a statement that I'd like to get your perspective on. He made an analogy that if the northern elders are insisting that the um, brutality, the police brutality that is experienced in these other parts of the country is not so popular because we've had several leaders there say they shouldn't end SARS up not. And this group seem to have that position. Now, Pandev is saying that, isn't it curious that the same, the brutality that's been experienced in one part of the country, it's not seeming, it's not experienced in another part of the country. And he's asking the question of our leaders, why is this so? I want you to attempt to answer that question based on the reality we have on the ground. Okay, so uh, you, I agree that there has been every militarization of, of, uh, of every policing of the southern part of the country, you know. But I also tell you that there had been police brutality even in Kano. There had been reports of that in Kano. It might not be as prominent of as as what we experienced in the south, but there had been, you know, police brutality in the north as well. But even the fact that we are saying, I don't want us to continue to talk about regionalizing this uh, this NSAS protest or the police brutality. Whatever affects one single Nigerian, either it's in the north, in the south, in the east, should, should, should affect the whole of the country. Everybody should feel concerned. Kidnapping is going on in the middle belt. Insecurity is going on in the north now. All Nigerians should be concerned. So even if it's a, a Nigerian that is being, that is being challenged by this challenge, by this issue, everybody, Everybody, whether you are facing it, I have never been brutalized by the police before. I have never been accosted by the police to, 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 to be intimidated before. But I, I, I understand what an average young Nigerian goes through, when, especially when they, 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 they feel, they assume them, they profile them immediately. And what you see immediately is that they take charge because they have powers of the gun. We should not take this. It's, it's whether it's, it concerns me or it doesn't, eventually, it's going to spread to the north, either they like it or not. Now we are talking about kidnap kidnapping in the north now. Eventually, kidnapping is going to spread to the south if we are not careful. So when it... Mr. Shoebi, isn't it worrisome that these are leaders? I mean, we had the likes of the uh, Sultan of Sokoto um, the uh, Third, Saad Abubakar. We had the likes of the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan. We had the likes of names that are known in Nigerian politics going to a sectional meeting on Norton leadership. Isn't it worrying that we still have this segmentation, Norton leaders taking a position, uh, Southeast leaders taking a position, Shouldn't it be that these leaders should come together like you are advocating, other than coming out with such communique and creating this sort of sectional leadership? Well, I hold the, the Northerners and Northern brothers to account on this. They are supposed to stand against segmentation. Nigeria is one as of today, and we hope that it's going to stay as one. So when we see sectional leadership addressing issues that concerns 
the nationality and trying to separate themselves or castigate that issue to be sectional, then we should stand against them and let them know that. Not only should stand against them and let them know that they are not representing them, that that is not their voice that they are speaking. Do you, do you get my point now? Niger Nigerians who are not on us should be the ones to stand against their leadership trying to sectionalize the country. We are trying to see how we can harmonize the country and see that Nigeria is one stays as one. But when we have leadership trying to sectionalize issues that concerns every Nigerian, whatever happens to one single Nigerian, should be, we, everyone in this country should feel concerned. We shouldn't say because yeah, it's in the southern side of the country, we are not concerned. This is not about us. And because the southerners are agitating for this, then they want to unseat a northern president. That shouldn't be the case. That should the case should be that they should investigate the matter. Is this are these issues actually happening? Are these police brutality actually prominent in the in the south? And why is it prominent in the south? They should ask questions rather than continue to castigate the protesters and say this is about unseating the leadership, the present leadership we have at the most affair for now. All right, um, Kyle Shoebi, thank you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Um, uh, pretty interesting statements that you've made this morning. And looking forward to having another conversation with you as soon as possible. Thanks once again. Thank you. Um, we're still watching uh, the breakfast. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoyed, um, you his know, his views and his contribution. Um, there's certain things that he also mentioned, uh, pointing out, you know, that it it feels like, you know, it's a playbook. You know, when you know there are certain issues to be discussed. You know, instead of going straight to the issue, we try to bring in politics, try to bring in religion, bring in tribe, and all of that. Uh, you know, to distract you from the main discussion. So also, something that he mentioned is if it affects any any Nigerian, it should it be should a problem. It should affect you know, everyone. The fact it's... that it happened in Loring, you know, doesn't make it less of the Kaduna State Governor's problem. I, I think the, the kind of narrative uh, the not leaders should be having is what are they doing in the north that seems different from what is being done in other parts of the country where these uh, alleged uh, these attacks, not alleged attacks this attacks by police officers is noticed. Security agencies, not narrowed to police officers alone. These are the kind of questions they should be asking. Is, it, is there something we're doing that this part of the country is not doing? How can that be replicated? Or who should be held responsible? Is there maybe a need to you know, make a transfer? And then El Rufai did make um, a submission there that I think is worth mentioning here. Yeah, he talked about the need for us to have uh, state, state police. police. He said, isn't it time we had state police so that the people that are within that uh, um, um, area a domicile there know what the security challenges is this is um, a, a call that has been reiterated over and over again it doesn't seem to be getting it that is the kind of call that leaders who are invested in the Nigerian project should be having absolutely you know, um, so. and I feel there's police brutality everywhere it's just it just happens for different reasons in, in different parts of the country in the north you know it's not going to be mostly about extortion and uh, trying to get money off you it might be for a totally different reason um, and of course um, reports you know have come in Every, almost every year uh, detailing these levels of, of brutality and extra you know, judicial killings and all of that. We, in the southern part of Nigeria, just an, an entirely different picture of why it happens and a disrespect for the value of human life and all of that. Well, well, we'll see. Let's, see, let's hope that uh, we'll get more collective exactly. action in the coming days. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.